Hey everybody, I'm Lawrence, and welcome to episode two of Dirty Basement Terrain. In this, we're continuing a series of pit trap tiles, and with this one, I'm actually showing you the easiest, simplest one to make, which is just a straight up pitfall or deadfall, whatever you want to call it, and it winds up just looking like a straight up slab of stone. And that's it. Nothing special, nothing great, but it is a very quick and easy pit trap tile to make. Now, in this episode, I am going to be skipping over the prep of the graphics medium chipboard, which is part of the build, and the SPS phone, which is also part of the build. That is covered in episode one, and I will put a link in the description, or wherever, I don't know, however you're watching, but there will be a link in the description to episode one, which covers those steps. But stick around, see how I made it. But also remember, this is how I make it, not how you have to make it. Okay, this is a pretty simple step. We have our pre-prepared pieces of graphics medium chipboard and XPS, and we're going to add texture to it with the classic foil ball trick. For pieces this size, the foil ball is absolutely the most practical and best way to go to add foil to it. So, I mean, there are other ways to add texture to a piece, but this works. See? One side smooth, one side has stone texture. Now, of course, we got to glue the XPS piece to the graphics medium. And it's just a simple matter of brushing on. This is how I do it. I like to brush on my PVA to a piece like this. It gets me a good even coverage, and I make sure like I said, the whole thing's going to stick to the chipboard. i got to get that last little bit, of course. <laughs> But then it's just a matter of simply pressing it to the chipboard and making sure it's somewhat even. Oops! <laughs> oh, hell. Yeah, I did that. No big deal. But again, just want to make sure it's lined up right and we're good to go. And of course, this is a step that comes once the glue is dry. That comes along with every XPS project of this type. And don't worry, the glove is just to uh, avoid some of the mess on one of my hands. <laughs> Not for safety reasons. It's just Mod Podge and black paint mix. So I can make the foam a little stronger and get my black base coat at the same time. And that's why you do it. Of course, once your Mod Podge layer is dry, it's time to add a base coat. And with this, I'm, as with most of my stuff, I'm adding a dark blue gray from Apple Barrel. That's just my personal favorite go-to for the base coat of stone like this. You don't have to use that color. You can use whatever dark gray you want. But, like I said, this is just what I use for tiles like this. Now this step you absolutely do not have to do. I just like to add splashes of color to my stone. I'm using Decoar True Ochre, Apple Barrel's Kelly Green, and Decoar's R Rookwood Red. And stone, as I stated in the previous video, stone does not just come in gray. It has streaks of color in it, you know, tans, browns, greens, I've seen blues, I've even seen purple, but this step is not necessary unless... You know, this is just an overbrush of my go-to mid-tone gray. We're not going for 100% coverage, maybe like 80 to 85%. And it's, I'm using Apple Barrel's Pewter Gray, but again, that's just my preference, and it doesn't have to be yours. But again, you don't want 100% coverage. You just want like around 80 to 85. And of course, in this third step here in the painting process, I'm just going with a dry brush of a apple barrels granite gray you don't want you just want to catch all the main ridges and edges you don't want a whole lot of coverage this is dry brushing after all and if you're doing dry brushing on terrain don't buy an expensive brush just do what i did i went to the dollar tree and picked up some makeup brushes it's if you're dry brushing terrain you don't want to spend a lot of money to be honest but, and I don't, <laughs> lol. And of course now I'm going to give the towels a wash. You don't have to do this, the towels are actually done 
if you don't want to take any further stats, but I'm going to take a few extras because these are my tiles, so I'm going to make them the way I want. I'm just using a dark brown wash because I don't like using black when I want to have a dirty look. The brown, I think, in my personal opinion, gives a better look if you're going for a dingy, dirty look. You're going to need 100% coverage on this, at least for what I'm going for, I do. And I said, once you get the wash on, you can set it off and let it sit to dry. Okay, now that the wash is dried, you can see it leaves a pretty dirty, nasty looking tile. And you could leave it like that if you want. And again, I'm going to give it another coat dry brush with the granite gray. Because I want to bring up the edge highlights and maybe some of the higher points of the tile itself. And I still want to leave the deep recesses looking dirty and nasty. Because this is a dungeon. I mean, I don't think they have maid service in dungeons, so. At this point, technically, the tiles are done. But it's a big square of gray. And I want to add a little bit of color to it because these pit trap tiles, honestly, look boring. They really do. So I want to add a little bit of moss here. Now, me personally, I mix up my own moss or flocking through different colors from Woodland Scenics. Just put some into a little mixing cup. And when I'm mixing moss, I prefer to use tacky glue, Aileen's tacky glue to be specific. Now, with this process, when you're making moss, one thing you want to be sure of is you don't want to mix it that it runs or it just kind of spreads out on its own. You want to mix it to the consistency of a really, really thick paste that, well, if you push it down, it'll go down, but that it just won't start spreading out on its own. Because if you put too much uh, PVA into it, it will go smooth and it will have a shine to it. Do you want to shine to your moss? Mm, maybe, but I don't really like it and I want it to be bumpy and kind of knotty and nasty. So I'm only adding bits of glue at a time until it gets to a consistency that I like, of like a really chunky paste. So, I said, when you're mixing up your moss, don't don't add all the glue at once. Add it in small parts because you can always add more, but once it's in, you can't get it out. You could add more flock if you want to, but it's just easier to add small amounts of glue because you don't want to make too much because if you do seal it up, it will last for a while, but not forever. So you don't want to waste your flock or your glue for that matter. And I said, just make sure you get keep stirring and stirring till I said, this is all a matter of consistency. And some people want to have it f their moss flat, but just about there. It looks kind of chunky to me. So, as you can see, it's thick. It's not spreading out on its own. It's perfect. Now I'm going to get a coffee stirrer stick. Just, yeah, it's just easier to throw out the stick than try and wash out the brush with this stuff. Just spread it out. I'm trying to keep it towards the edges mostly because it... The moss seems to grow in edges and corners. In some places I'll put it out in the middle, but I said, you want to overdo it for this? I mean, actually you could. You could go a whole tile if you want. Well, you could call these tiles done. I still think they need a little something because these are plain flat tiles. And just a few spots of moss yes wasn't doing it for me so I decided to add some of Green Stuff World's coagulated blood effects I like it, it works you don't have to use a lot of it to get the effect you need I was thinking, well maybe these straps have been sprung before and the victims kind of landed on their heads and left spots of blood so uh, using a stippling effect with a stiff bristle brush I decided to add a few spots and then of course I'm going to flick some little blood splatter on it 
And at this point, I'm happy with how the tiles look, and I'm going to call them done. And as you can see, you can just pull out a 3x3 three three tile and plop the trap tile down in to symbolize that the players have set off a trap if they weren't checking for them or they were unsuccessful in their checking for them, and they can deal with the consequences. Hey, if you made it this far, it means you made it, watched the whole thing and made it to the end. I appreciate that. If you like it, hit the thumbs up. If you don't like it, hit the thumbs down. Either way. If you want to see more of what this series of dungeon trap tiles, hit the subscribe button. More are coming. As always, remember, the only person you got to worry about when you're making terrain is yourself. Because it's your terrain. <laughs>